Hello and welcome to the second instalment of the New Year's Drawing Challenge. If you haven't been following along, this is a drawing challenge where for 31 days I'll be drawing prompts chosen by people from Instagram in 10 minutes. This video is a recap of how the seven drawings from this week turned out. Tell me which idea you like the best in a comment and later on I'll do some longer drawings and we'll do a comparison of how the 10 minute drawing stacked up with a longer more finished drawing. On day 8 we kicked off with Fella Facing a Swamp Monster. This was from Joe Vinton Art on Instagram. Go check out Joe, he does some great stuff. And to make it easy for you I've linked everybody's Instagram in the description box below. So go and check out their work, say hello to them, tell them I sent him. Now with some of these challenge drawings I've been using references to help me figure out exactly what I'm going to draw. For this drawing it's completely from my imagination. I had no idea what I wanted to do so I had to just sit down and think about what does a swamp monster look like and what kind of fella do I really want to be facing that guy down. Now I have to say it's been really enjoyable the challenge of these different prompts that people have given me. They've given me a lot of things that I certainly would never have thought of for myself or that I would never have had a go at. So thank you very much Joe. Yours was one of the really enjoyable prompts that made me think a bit. Now I've decided to give my fella a sword and a shield. I don't want him to have to face down this swamp monster alone. Because I only have 10 minutes for these drawings, for each drawing I really have to focus in on what it is I want to achieve. I don't have enough time for everything. For this particular drawing I decided shapes and forms were going to be my thing. So that's what I'm really focusing on. I've taken one or two minutes to devote a little bit of time to building some space in the background just to put the swamp in and that's all the time I've got. The drawing is done. Tell me what you think. Did you enjoy seeing this? Go see Joe and let him know. Now the second prompt for this week on day 9 was hello. This was put in by our hub underscore 2. Thank you very much for your prompt. I enjoyed this one as well. It's another one that made me stop and think how am I going to portray this in a drawing. In the end I decided to do this in the shape of a portrait but I needed to find somebody with a very happy and welcoming friendly face. So I chose to do Ernest Borgnine. Now if you're a young person you might not remember Ernest but he actually used to be quite a popular movie star and television star from way back in the day. The main reason that I chose Ernest was because of his very friendly welcoming smile that he always had. Now I chose to draw this one in pencil. Pencil gives me a little bit more control and allows me to draw in a little bit more detail than some of the other mediums you'll see me use. But it also means that I won't have as much time to build up layers so I'm going to have to be happy with a, uh, a, a softer finish. I won't be able to get the darks quite as dark as I would. I just won't have time to build up many layers in this drawing in 10 minutes. So why can't you draw a person's nose 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. So for this drawing I'm really focusing on shapes with a small amount of values but I'm really just hinting at those. Just enough to put a, a glimpse of a form there. And there's the time up. Time to move on again. Thank you very much. This was a great prompt to draw and I really enjoyed it. Good on you. Have you been doing any interesting drawing challenges lately? If so leave me a comment below and tell me about it. I'd love to know what you've been up to too. Now the next prompt was Fog and this was by Artsy Pineapple who you can also find here on YouTube. Go ahead, check her out, she's got some great art. Now I live in a part of the world where we get fog all the time. All year long often we see fog in the mornings. So I'm using a reference photo for this drawing. It was a photo that I happened to take some years ago on my way to work early in the morning. Whenever you see something exciting or something that really visually appeals to you, I encourage you to take a quick photo, do a quick drawing, find some way to capture that and keep it for later. You never know when that's going to come in handy. Now I'm drawing this one on a toned piece of paper. What that means is simply it's paper that has some colour on it already. The reason that I've chosen that for this drawing is because I'm going to come over the top with some white pastel and that's going to really make the white stand out. Whereas if I'd drawn this just on a white piece of paper, the white pastel would not have shown up as closely and I would have had to spend more time laying down charcoal to build up the same tone as was already in the paper. So for the drawing I'm really just putting in some very basic shapes. I'm putting some values in but they're just hinting at values just enough to create some space for the fog to live in. I'm using lines to make the old trees look a little bit more exciting and interesting and there's that pesky timer again. Well the drawing's done. What do you think? Don't forget to leave your favourite drawing in the comments below. And if it's not too much to ask, I'd love it if you'd hit the like button. That really does help me out a lot. The next prompt was my favourite childhood home 
or holiday destination. This was from the Creative Family Historian. If you want to know about family history, go check out the Creative Family Historian. They're also here on YouTube, so go and check them out. Now this prompt was really challenging. What's this going on? Somebody made a challenge challenging? The reason this one was so challenging is because, to be honest with you, I don't really remember places that well as far as places I lived as a child or any of those things. Now I grew up with a large family, but we did move around a lot and we lived in a lot of different homes. But one of the things that was fairly permanent were some of our family gatherings. We had a lot of birthday parties and other events like that, and those are some of the things that I really recall. Now every birthday party needs a good joke. So why do the candles go on top of the cake? Because it's so hard to light them when you put them on the bottom. What do you say to a rabbit on their birthday? Hoppy birthday! And what does every birthday end in? The letter Y. With only 10 minutes to work in, I decided to make this a little bit more symbolic than realistic. It's going to make this one a little bit more surreal. So of course I've put some balloons in for people, and a cake, and just a teapot on the table. These things all relate back to my childhood, and there we go. That's the drawing done. On to day 12, the prompt was translucent. Thank you for the prompt, Louise Massey Art. You really made me think about this. Go check her out, guys. She does some really fantastic paintings. You won't be disappointed. So translucent basically means something a bit ghostly or something you could see through. So I've decided to approach this one by laying down a basic landscape in the background and then I'm going to draw something over the top of that. Some of these prompts have really made me use my brain. Thank you guys. It's good to get brain exercise in. So I've chosen charcoal over the top of some toned paper again because this probably is the medium that allows me to put in the most amount of layers with the least amount of time. And in a 10 minute challenge, saving time is critical. As you can see, I've drawn a self-portrait over the top of the landscape. The landscape still shows through underneath. Now I think that this is quite an interesting idea and it's something that I'm keen to return to again in the future. It might be worth a series trying some different elements with different parts of the landscape in different places or drawing different things in the background. I've drawn a touch of white pastel over the top of the charcoal just to put a few highlights in. That brings the face forward from the landscape and gives it that little bit of extra clarity. There's even time for a few quick flowers in the foreground before that pesky timer catches me again. If you think you haven't got time to draw every day, well here's the proof otherwise. Now the day 13 prompt was Snake by M. Dibel. Thank you so much M, this was a good one to do. Now it might be just a coincidence, but actually later in the day after doing this drawing I saw a large brown snake. But it was actually quite fun to draw, because I've never really stopped and looked at a snake from close up before. There are lots of interesting patterns in the scales, and this is another topic that I'd be interested to return to again and try some more drawings of. Now I really don't have time to get bogged down in the details here, even though the drawing would justify it. So to start off with I'm really just using lines to draw shapes, and that's my entire focus. Now you can actually use the shapes to be able to judge the proportions of all the things around it. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle. You've got to keep looking, does this shape fit here? Does that go there? And that's a great way to start learning to understand proportions and see them by eye. How do snakes weigh themselves? With their scales. What's a snake's favorite floor covering? Reptiles. Now I've chosen to put a dark background in on this drawing to really bring the snake forward and try and make it pop. So I'm spending the last little bit of time that I've got just doing that. It's time for a couple of last minute tidy ups and the time is done. There are a number of reasons why a 10 minute drawing can benefit you. One of the best reasons is that it gives you the opportunity to get regular practice in and regular practice is what really gives you results. Now the next prompt was Dinosaur and this was from Zuzka Geltner. I hope I'm saying your name right. Check her out on Instagram. She does some amazing drawings. You'll be amazed. Now I've pulled out some pastels to make sure we have some fun with colours this week. I'm going with a nice green for my dinosaur because what other colour would you want your dinosaur to be? Let me know in the comments below what colour you'd make your dinosaur. Now the reference for this drawing is actually a photo that I took at a dinosaur museum in Canberra in Australia. Now this particular dinosaur is called the Australovenator. And I'm almost certain that I've said that wrong and I apologise to dinosaur fanatics everywhere. One of the keys to drawing with pastel is keeping your colours clean. Now the key to keeping your colours clean is to know which colours you want to use first and to put them down in appropriate layers. Now there will be a couple of pastel tutorials coming up on the channel in the coming weeks where I'll go into a little bit more detail if you want to know more. 
But for now, I'm out of time. That pesky timer has caught me again. How do you know if there's a dinosaur in your fridge? Because the door won't shut. A few colours, some shapes, a little bit of a background, and that is your seven drawings for the week. Seven drawings, 70 minutes, done. Now I'd just like to mention before I go, there are plenty of other videos on this channel that can help you on your drawing journey. Or click through to my website www.justindewire.art It's in the description box below and there are plenty of resources there to help you on your drawing journey. Thank you and bye bye.